want to welcome everyone to our Acumatica Cloud year-end webinar. A uh, lot to go over today. Um, a couple people on the phone with me from Net of Work. We've got Jason Schwartz and John Cooper, some of our awesome Acumatica consultants um, here to help me if I get stuck along the way. I'm Sir Blumenthal and I'll be doing this presentation today. I guess I uh, got the short stick today. So, no, this is a fun topic. Um, so the presentation is going to be about 45 minutes. The phone lines are muted. Sorry about that. And um, if you have any questions, please use the questions box in the lower right-hand corner. Um, I invite you to use that throughout the presentation so that if there is a question, um, we can uh, answer it for you as well as everyone. There's usually a lot of great feedback during these uh, year-end webinars and a lot of great questions. Um, feel free to really ask anything you want. Uh, about year end during these, um, I think that there's it, so if you have the question, someone else has the same question. So I think it's important to go over that. So really simple, simple agenda today. 1099 processing. The government's made a lot of changes to 1099s this year. So hold on to your hats. If it was in 2020, with everything else going on, this will just put the icing on the cake. And then we also have go over a little bit about period end processing, what you need to do within um, Acumatic to make sure you get your period end processing right. The most important thing, and I'm just going to say it, is just closing out the periods. It doesn't there's no real true reason to do it except for one, and that is to protect your data. That is the most important reason. It's not like uh, your balances will not roll forward correctly. It's not like your reports will not print out. But it's just so important to to dodge, to lock your periods. As an accountant myself, um, I do not want people going back and making posting entries to prior years by mistake. And trust me, we've all had someone accidentally do that, um, and it's not fun trying to clean that up. So anyway, that's what we'll be going over today. So, what happened in 2020? That's a long story, but we're going to get down to the 1099 part of it. So what happened was is that the in the past, we all used the 1099 miscellaneous form. And on box seven, if you have any non-employee compensation, that was put there. And that was what most people used it for, honestly, within the um, within the Acumatica or, um, or ERP systems. You know, every once in a while, you have someone who paid some rents, um, did some, you know, uh, some other income. But most of it, to be honest, was non-employee compensation. Well, that changed. So they rolled out a form that has not been used since 1982, um, and that is called the um, NEC form, the Non-Employee Compensation Form. And so that's going to be new for this year. So the one hint that you could take away from this slide is that please do not wait till the end of January to get these done. You have to file this with the IRS and the government by the end of January. Um, they, in the past, um, one was due to the employee and then one was due to the IRS and they have made sure that those are both due at the end of January. Um, and they are really, again, this is something that the government over the last four or five years is really tightened down and making sure that you are getting 1099s out to your employees, uh, or sorry, not to your employees, to your um, vendors that need it. Um, so please, you know, make sure that you're doing, take, spending the time now, making sure your vendors are set up right, making sure your 1099s were recorded correctly for the year, um, and that you can, at the end of the year, print those 1099 NECs out for next year. Um, and going to be really, really important. So, how does so this is by the way just an example? What the um, this was the new um, 1099 miscellaneous form. As you can see, where box seven is, it's now just a box that says payer made direct sales of five thousand dollars or more to the consumer products uh, uh, to buy um, uh, to a buyer for a resale. So that's the new box seven on the 1099s. On the NEC form, it's pretty straightforward looking form. Um, what they basically did was they add the non-employee compensation is box one, and then um, a couple, you know, the federal withholding income tax, I mean, federal income tax withheld, as well as state tax withheld, um, things like that. So um, that is the new um, um, NEC form. Those forms, where do you get them? Most important thing. You can get, there's um, some links out there, um, Acumatic, there's some form, um, there's some places like they'll say Acumatica um, forms. Um, you can do that, but honestly, any form 
um, that you get um, laser printed form. So if you go to Office Max Staples, um, any of those places, you can, you can be able to get these forms. You do need to get the pre-printed forms, and that's a key thing. You need to get the pre-printed forms. So order them now. Um, and as I always tell people, when you first do it the first time, run it through. Don't do all. Choose one or two vendors just to make sure it lines up correctly. If it doesn't work, contact us here at Netterwork, um, just at helpdesk at, at netterwork.com, um, or you can contact us directly, Jason, myself, um, um, John, or, and we can, uh, one of us, or probably Jason, will be helping you with the form design in case it just needs to be a smidgen adjusted. Every once in a while we see that. So again, don't wait till the last minute. So how does this work? We've all set up our vendors many, many years ago. Do we need to go into all the vendors and change them from box seven to box one? The answer is no, do not change anything. <laughs> so what they did within Acumatica is that if you have 2019 R2 and higher, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but as long as you're on 2019 R2 and higher, when you go into the vendor screen, and you click on this as a 1099 vendor, there is a box that says which box are they gonna use? And if you look, it says box seven, non-employee compensation, 1099 NEC, box one starting in 2020. So what they've done is that you continue using box seven, but when it prints out the 1099 ME miscellaneous, it ignores it. When you print out the, um, the NEC, a form the 1099 NEC it puts it in box one so there's nothing you need to do in the data there is no changes to the um, the data um, that you need to do or anything inside the vendor at this point um, if you do need to use the box seven um, for 1099 that's actually you make that box nine so they kind of like relabeled a few of the boxes around so that you don't have to go in and change your 1099 um, setup for your vendors at all now, we put something really important in number two here. This is only supported on uh, version 2019 R2 and higher. So um, that's gonna be really important. If you're on 2019 R1 or lower, you have to do this, as, you have to do an update. Um, we do have some workarounds for you in terms of that. Um, we can um, work with you. Um, there's a couple ideas we have. Um, if you're in the middle of this um, upgrade, we can um, set up a sandbox for you um, so you can do your 1099s once your um, um, once your year is done. That's one way we can kind of work around. Um, we can put this on a, we can upgrade your system as a standalone. There's a couple of things we can do to help you with this, um, but the best best thing to do um, is make sure that you're on 2019 R2 and there is plenty of time um, to get that done um, in the next 30, 45 days as well. So let's say that you're now in, Dece you know, we're now in December and you're like, hey, how do I set up a vendor as a 1099? You know, did I set up my vendors correctly at this point? Well, all you have to do is go into your vendor screen. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to switch over to my Acumatica here at this point here. I'm gonna um, bring this over to my other screen. So sorry about that. So when you go into accounts payable here and we go into a vendor, let's say that we have a vendor such as AA vendor here. What you'll see is that over here in the right-hand corner, hopefully this has been set up right, you mark it as a 1099 vendor. That is the first important thing to do. The second thing is to come in here and choose which box does it go to. And again, we've talked about the, the new form, I mean the new box numbers, um, all that here. So you usually choose box seven um, or whatever you're doing at this point. One of the questions we have is that, what happens if I do 1099 dividends or 1099 interest? Acumatica does not do those. Just FYI, Acumatica does not do 1099 interest or dividends. So it only does the MIS form and the NEC form. Um, now, once that's been set up in there, if you have um, if you have made previous payments to that vendor they're not automatically going to um, um, show up in there. We'll need to adjust your 1099 totals. So that's really important. So if you turn on a vendor 
and you realize you made some bill payments, you cannot just simply, it's not gonna simply show up on the 1099 form. You have to make sure that you've, um, we're gonna have to adjust the, um, there's a couple ways of handling it, but you're gonna have to adjust the, um, um, the history associated to that vendor, basically. Now, once you turn that on, when you're entering bills, um, you'll see this 1099 box. So going back to my, um, my screen here, if I go into bills and adjustments here, and I'm gonna enter a bill for my AA vendor. So I'll come in here, I'm gonna turn it off hold. I always need to put a vendor reference in there. Um, I'll choose AA vendor at this point here, my favorite vendor. And I'm gonna come to my lines and just um, put a quantity of uh, one and a unit price of $600. You'll see that if I scroll over here and I am gonna put a project in here so I don't get yelled at by the system, there's my 1099 box. Now, a lot of people are like, hmm, you can override this at this point, but let's say that you're doing an expense that's not, uh, does not apply to that. Simply just hit the delete button there. So it, unfortunately in the drop down, it does not give you the ability like, oh, I want to, I don't want it to be any of these. Um, just hit the delete button and tab over. And that way you can get rid of that, um, that, that um, the, the box that it's pointing to. But by default, it will automatically come over here. Now, if I was to post this bill in the system, again, it's not going to be recognized as the 1099. 1099s are on a cash basis. What does that mean? Well, if I come here and say release at this point here and release that, if I come to my, for example, my 1099 vendor history and bring up my vendor, um, AA vendor for 2020, for example, I had previously had $1,100 in there. It's still $1,100. The only way for that to show up is that if I went in and back into that bill, for example, and I'm just gonna go into the bill directly, there's multiple ways of handling this, but I'm gonna to go to my actions and pay the bill. The part of paying the bill, the actual check, is what makes it hit the 1099 amounts. So um, if you haven't paid them, or you haven't updated the bill, if you haven't paid them, um, him or her, then it would not show up. So now I'm gonna say, take this off hold. I'm gonna go in and print the check at this point here. I'm gonna hit process. Obviously, I shouldn't be just simply previewing the check, but I am just for fun here. Um, I'm gonna come back in here and say, uh, process, release the payment. And once I've done that, now if I go back into my 1099 vendor history at this point here, um, for 2020, you'll see that that amount has changed or increased at that point. So it is a different process now. Uh, I mean, so, so it is based upon the actual check being cut that makes it hit the 1099. I've been going very quickly. I've been drinking a little bit too much Coca-Cola this morning. Any questions that come up? Jason, any questions that come in? Came in? Uh, just, oh, just caught up. If the previous bill wasn't approved with the 1099 box pre-filled, we have to manually change the totals? That is correct. That is 100% correct. So, um, and we'll be publishing a little paper on how to modify this because they have in the past, they have, it, you cannot simply just go in here and change these amounts. Um, so you cannot just simply change these totals. There are There is a way that we have to do it and we'll be sending out a documentation on that process. So um, if, you, uh, if, we do, if you don't get that, um, that's one of the things we're working on right now is a, a process of helping you change those previous ones. Great, that's the only question at this moment. Awesome, thank you. Great question. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Oops, happens when you have too many screens open. 
Um, okay, so we talked about 1099 amounts are not recognized. And by the way, if anyone wants this PowerPoint, please let us, let us know. Um, be happy, just put, um, put it in the notes and we'll be happy to make sure this gets emailed to you. So what can, what can we see here? Well, there's a couple really good reports out there. There's the 1099 um, detail report. And let me just run this for you right off my system instead of looking at a screenshot. So what I usually do is I come over here and I used to do you know, month end, and so trust me, I'm very familiar with these processes. What I always do is, is that um, I come over where it says 1099 year details. It's a report that I like. I choose the year 2020 at this point here, 2020, and I run the report. And this will actually show me at this point here um, all of my um, checks that I've done now. You'll see that AA vendor, the one we just did, we did just check. I cut check 1651 for $600. That was the invoice reference. Um, there's the other one here. Now, the accountant in me, because I'm an, you know, I'm an, I'm an accountant by nature. Uh, my dad was, so I always had to tick and tie everything. I would, if I were you, go in and look at my, my um, check, my um, check, my check history, my payment history, and when I would look at that, I would look and see what checks I've cut to that vendor, and make sure that they two equal each other. That way, it's just an extra step of making sure did I miss any payments that I didn't record a 1099 on. So there's a couple ways you could do that. You can go like into your checks, for example, and I can search for like, for example, where it's equal to AA vendor for example and I'm just going to choose that and I could put a little date range in here it says um, is from we'll put in from January 1st to December 31st hit OK and here's all my checks for that vendor well it looks like we got these last two checks we missed some other checks and again those might or not might might or might not be Vendors, but that's the easy. That's an easy way to making sure if my or my my two reports tying to each other that I hit all my payments. Um, this is one of the ways to do it. You can also run a printout. Um, there's multiple ways of handling it, but that's what I do there. Um, so the detail report, very 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 good from that aspect. Oops, sorry. So the next thing. And one of the questions we sometimes get asked is, is that you have to print out your 1099s for each branch and for each company. Well, what does that mean? So it depends upon how this is, was set up in your system. But for example, I'm under the wholesale company here. This is my legal entity at this point here. So everything that I'm doing at this point here is for my 1099s under my wholesale company. Um, so this is how I would, this is for those, my retail company would be different, my east versus my west, our companies would be different. So these are all, my different. so this applies only to, to that. That's why it's important when you start doing the allocations and stuff like that, to how it hits the 1099s at that point. So um, you would print them out for each company. You need to get the order forms ordered ahead of time we've talked about that and again please test two vendors before printing them out what i like to do is that going back to my um to here i'll, I'll come over here come to my 1099 nec form so you will see on your menu a miscellaneous form and nec form if i come in here it'll ask me the company branch um it'll ask me my year I'm gonna say 2020. Now, one of the things that I see under here that is bad, I'm in demo data, but I am going to um, talk about at the end, is that notice the status here is all set to open. That's not good. I have not closed out my 1099s. It should, once you're done with everything, should be closed out. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So again, I'm gonna do my 2020 here. I'm going to, so that I don't print it for everything, I can say, for example, where the vendor ID is equal to a specific, you know, vendor is equal to, for example, one vendor. So I could choose a specific vendor. That way I'm not, again, killing, printing them all out. Um, the other trick, by the way, if you just want to make sure they all line up, is to print it onto white paper and then take the piece of paper that printed out, 
hold it up against the other one and then shine it up to the light and kind of just have the 1099 form behind your blank piece of paper, your, pa your paper that you printed the 1099 on and just hold it up to see also if that will line up. That's another easy way to making sure that um, everything's in the right alignment boxes. But when, if you do, if we do need to make changes, we can't want hold it up very well. It's better to print it on the form, the one page, and then send it over to us so we can see the changes if needed to be made. Um, you can also make a changes to the report directly if you need by clicking on edit report. The only thing that you need to have installed on your machine is um, if you go to Acumatica, there is a um, report designer. Um, by default, that's not installed on your machine. It's an extra little process. Um, again, if you want that in the report designer installed on your machine, please let us know. We can help, help you get that installed. But at this point here, I'm gonna click on run report. And at this point here, you'll see that it prints it out. Um, hopefully everything matches up. You'll see um, here my company IDs, all that looks. And at this point, if it did look okay, um, this is where I would now send it, um, print it on real forms. Um, you notice that the last page does print out a total um, of the three documents, so it does print out the total document at the end. If you accidentally go into 1099 um, um, MISC um, because it's just out of habit and you click on um, 2020, for example, and run the report, you'll see that nothing shows up. Um, so if you go into there, um, it will not print out anything from the miscellaneous because those were not miscellaneous and nothing applied. It automatically moved everything from box seven to box one, and hence why your 1099 miscellaneous forms will look blank at that point. Um, I think we hit all that. So the last or a couple last things, um, the process of transmitting. So the government is wanting us to do a lot more things electronic. Um, do not wait till the last second again to sign up with the government if you do need to send these off electronically. And the numbers have changed. Each year that number goes down that they want to have you send electronically to them. Um, I will be honest, I do not remember what the number is this year. If anyone has that, um, I would I'll take any input here. Uh, but um, you do, you know, so if you are going to transmit these electronically, um, please, um, the, the system will do it for you. So all you have to do is come into, back into here, you'll say create my e-file at this point here. Um, it will ask you, what are you transmitting here? So again, the transmitter company, um, the 1099 year, prepare for the transmitter only um, or all marked companies. So this is where you can consolidate them together if you need to. Um, you can also choose, you um, again, what boxes. Um, I'm gonna do all boxes. And at this point here, um, I'm gonna simply say process. And what it's going to do is create the file down below. Now it still calls it a 1099 miscellaneous file. If I open up this text file here, you'll see here is the um, information that is sent to the IRS. And since um, it looks like the matrix here, I can see that 17,000 um, right there, that is the amount that we're sending them, or that, that we're transmitting to the IRS. Here is my total amount right here. Um, and this is what the government requires to be sent to them uh, for that electronically. So it just creates the file right then and there. If something's wrong, theoretically, you could refix it. But by this time, you usually have printed out your 1099s ahead of time. So the last thing, we, and I, I, I'm very, I, when you're done, and you might wait till a couple, you know, a couple weeks or even a month end afterwards, but close out your 1099 years very important to do. Um, it prevents you from changing the numbers, locks in its audit controls. It's written in stone. I don't even know what else to say at this point here. So you, what you do is you come to your closed 1099 here. And at this point here, you say, oh, great, um, 2020. And I can simply just say, close the year. And the year will then be closed at that point. Any last questions on 1099s? Either I've put them all to sleep or they have 
or have overloaded them, one of the two. Um, a question just came in. It says uh, 1096 transmittal for ma mailing. So we do not we do not do the 1096. We do not do the 1096. Great. I believe and, that's the question. And everyone right. that uh, put in a question for them to be emailed, uh, have that written down. I appreciate you uh, posting that in the uh, questions. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. And don't worry, we're here for you. We're here, um, you know, it's it's December 10th. Um, you're not gonna think about this for another 30 days. We would just, well, hopefully get things set up, but if you have a question, but contact us. We definitely know that, that, that January's coming around. Just please, just please don't wait till last week. And I mean that sincerely, we just, um, 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 we, it, it, it's going to be very, the last week is usually very busy, um, with a lot of things going on. So we just tell people that. So, um, another question came in, uh, it says, do we send the text file to the IRS via your system? No. So that's a great question. So you have to go onto the government website and transmit it directly on the government website. We're producing the file for you. It is your job to go onto the government site and upload it onto there. And okay. and please again wait. Do not wait till last minute to sign up. So again, I believe I I gotta say if it's over fifty or sixty vendors now that the government wants you to do electronically, I could be wrong. So can, I know this is being recorded. I could be wrong, but I remember it's like fifty or sixty vendors. And so as a result, please if you do have that many ten ninety nines, please sign up with the government to upload the file earlier and not wait till last minute. Another question came in. So if you miss totals during the year for a vendor, we can contact you to adjust total? We're going to have a document on that. That's one of the things that we're working on with our blog right now. Um, so we'll be sending that out to everyone on this as well. How, uh, how will that be sent? Um, anyone who signed up for this webinar, we're going to be sending it, sending that document out. Good, everyone. Good, awesome. Uh, we got some thank yous. Uh, some great questions, everyone. Yeah, I love the interaction. These are the these are what makes the webinars fun. Okay, cool. So let's keep it going here. So we talked about ten ninety nines. Now, we've done a really good, Dan did a really, Dan, Dan St. John did a really good webinar on closing out your modules. So there was a few things I wanted to make sure we just hit regarding it today, just to make sure, because again, it's not a year-end webinar unless you close out all your modules. And again, the most important reason we talked about it is just locking down your system, preventing people from accidentally um, you know, posting into the wrong periods. You know, if you think about it today, you know, it's December 2020. You probably are done with, at this point here, with all your subsidiary modules. And I mean subsidiary meaning fixed assets, inventory, receivables, payables, banking, at least through September of 2020. Those should be closed out at this point. Don't make any mistakes, close them out. Prevent any accidental postings at this point here. The general ledger is the one that I usually keep open a little bit longer. Um, I don't close out each period. Sometimes I, I, I more unless you're again depends upon the organization. Some people close it out once a year. Some people close it out once a month. That one really depends upon your personal preference. But again, can you reopen the general ledger? The answer is yeah. So um, you know we've had um, uh, one of our clients that you know after they went live they were closing them out and every once in a while they're like oh man we forgot an entry. I'm like just reopen up that period and it worked out really well. So. You can you can reopen that up. So again, the main reasons to prevent accidental incorrect postings. So people always ask, well, what do I print out? To me, there's a couple of reports that we I always print out. Uh, the first is under the purchase order modules. Um, I print out the um, purchase order uh, purchase accruals detail. People are like, what is that report? That reconciles the purchases clearing. And if people don't know what purchases clearing is, if you're using the purchase order module, it is the difference between what you've received and what you've invoiced for inventory items. 
keyword there, inventory items. So for example, when I receive an inventory item, and we're gonna talk a little accounting here. So when I receive an inventory item, um, and do a receipt of goods, I have to debit inventory, it increases my inventory. What do I credit? I haven't received the billing yet. So I'm gonna debit purchases clearing or accrued uh, purchase accruals. When that bill comes in, it's now going to debit purchase accruals or purchases clearing and credit accounts payable. Simple offset there. So that purchases accruals should always be reconciled. That's a account to me that's, um, I when I first started doing this 25 years ago or 27 years ago, um, I've ran into many companies that did not reconcile that on their balance sheet. Um, I always do balance sheet audits. That's my was always my forte. And that was where people would make that mistake. And to me, I always recommend making sure that that is reconciled on a monthly basis. Um, it's hard to go back in time. So that's something that I like to always do at the last day of the month or the first um, morning, morning right afterwards, get that reconciled so we know that number is actually accurate. The other inventory modules, um, other the modules, inventory, accounts payable, receivable. I always run the valuation, you know, the inventory valuation report or the AP or AR balance by GL account. Um, make sure that those match up. Now, one thing that's nice about Acumatica is that you can prevent accidental postings to those accounts, um, these inventory accounts payable, accounts receivable accounts, by making them a control account within the um, chart of accounts setup. Um, so you can set up something called a control account that makes sure that only entries from the other modules come through there and you cannot post a journal entry directly. If you have issues, questions on that, um, my team will be happy to help you with that. But those are the reports that I always run at the month end. Um, I always print them off to PDF. I like, um, I even though you can rerun them again, I always print those to PDF and I store them in my um, in my SharePoint or my OneDrive or wherever you want to store those. Um, it's an easy way of uh, making sure that I've got the history then um, at that point. So one of the questions is that can I reopen a fiscal period? So the answer is yes. Um, so for example, let's just have a little fun. Let's go back into Acumatica. Um, since we've been in accounts payable the whole day, let's just finish up the day in accounts payable. Um, and if you come right here uh, under processes, close fiscal periods. Also one of the nice things, if you come up here and just type in the word close, um, you'll see all the closes all in one spot. So I, I always like using that little search up there. Um, I've gotten really lazy, I found out, or or more effective. I don't, have, don't know which one it is at this point, where I can literally um, use the search up here to go into my menu options. Um, so again, so it closed 1099, closed fiscal periods. You'll see banking, fixed assets, receivable inventory, and then routes. This is for the route um, delivery system within Acumatica, which we're not going to focus on today. So when I close my fiscal periods here, um, the action is to close. Notice that I have not been a good steward of my own self, and um, it's asking me 2013, and I can say, hey, I want to close um, all these out at the same um, time. So I can close out the entire 2013. Um, I could actually go really crazy and close out everything if it's been a few years. So don't feel like you're going to kill yourself the first time. You can literally just close them all out at the same time. You click on that and say process all. That will close out everything at that point. You can reopen a period if you need to. Um, and then one of the other important things here is unreleased documents. What this will do is that if you, when before you click on that, click on the unreleased documents. What that's going to check to make sure is that did you post everything for those periods that you're trying to close out? Um, if I go all the way into 2020, for example, and let's just say unreleased documents. It looks like I have released all my documents. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked in there. But that's a really good way of making sure that you close out everything in there. Um, and it will, that's the first thing you should do. Once you, once you click on process all, it will close out all those periods for you automatically at that point. And again, you can reopen. Now, if for some reason I click on reopen here and I say, oh gosh, I want to reopen January, notice. Um, and I'm going to turn that off again here. If I hit March, fine. But if I hit January, it has to reopen January, 
February, March, you cannot just open one period and then have a few other ones close. So if I go back, it's going to make me um, cl open up all the periods in between that. So, um, you know, so again, if I do February, it's going to do March as well. So just keep that in mind um, when you're reopening periods that you're going to have to close out multiple periods if there's a gap between that. And the screen is very much identical. So if I go to finance here and I go to, um, I'm sorry, if I go to manage my fiscal periods, um, here I can open. Now here we can manage our fiscal periods. This is where you open and close them and all that. And what it will do is, is that this will show me if it's closed in AP, AR, inventory, cash, and fixed assets. CA is cash or banking and then fixed assets. So you can see that all through there as well. So we already talked about this. I always like to get ahead of the PowerPoint. Um, click on unreleased documents. That shows me right there. The last question we get a lot of times is, do I need to make a backup? Well, that's up to you. Um, we always want to make sure you have that ability and understanding of how to do that. Um, so one of the things you can do is you can make a snapshot of your system um, very easily. Now, it is highly recommended that get everything. It's recommended. It's not required that everyone be out of the system when you do this. Um, just to, hey, get everyone out. Um, but what you're able to do is take a snapshot of the system. Now, that is done in a screen called the tenant screen, and we'll get into that in a moment. The one thing to keep in mind about tenants is that um, they do take up hard drive space. Now, everyone on this call who's running Acumatica, if you're running in the SaaS environment, you're given a allocation of space. Um, some of you, if you have different sizes um, uh, based upon how long you've been on the system, um, people that have been in the system for many, many, many years actually have a smaller amount because Acumatica has increased the allocations over the years. Um, um, but you, what you end up doing is that this will take up some space. So you want to make sure you have enough hard drive sp allocation space in there. Um, if there are old snapshots in there, um, you might want to clean them out. Again, if there's questions on this process, you can contact us. We can verify what your status is, um, clean up anything you need. Um, any old companies or tenants that you don't need anymore can also be cleaned up. So this is a good way of just cleaning up what's been done, sometimes by a previous reseller, um, sometimes by um, just during implementation. Um, you might have set up test companies or demo companies that you're no longer needing at that point. So just keep that in, in, in space, keep that in mind. And I'm going to show you how to view the space usage in a moment here. Um, so just keep that in mind um, during the entire process. So with that, so what you do is that if you go back in here, um, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, you system management and you can go right to your tenants. Um, the other way, simply type in the word tenant up top here and it will find it. So again, under system management, system maintenance and the tenants and tenants. And what a tenant is, is that it's the company that I'm, the main company that I'm currently in right now. So I'm in the demo company, sales, uh, sales demo company here. And if I had any snapshots down here, those are co copies of my company that I have made at that point. Um, I, the, again, we might have made it during a, um, during an implementation. Could have been that we before we applied an update. Um, it might have been before something you've done. Or so, just keep in mind about that. If you ever have a question about how much space you have left, go to your actions and click on View Space Usage. Now, I'm going to be honest. I am on my environment. I've got this this one. This version of Acumatica is not hosted by Acumatica. It's the same product, but I get when you're hosted by yourself, you get a lot more free space. Um, when you come in here, if it comes up as all blanks or does not look well right, or is this where it says last calculated, it's out of date, click on calculate used space. That's usually the best thing to do, even, even you know it might have calculated recently, click on calculate used 
space. And what it does is that it goes through all my companies at this point here, and it will say how much space I'm now using. So you'll see that I've got a total of uh, two gigs by tenants, um, about a half a gig by my snapshots, and I, so I'm using about two and a half total gig space. Um, now, mine are because I've got some large companies um, installed in here. Um, that's why I've got, you know, mine's being used up that much. But again, just keep in mind that um, you get um, usually the minimum I've seen is 20 gigs. Most people have 50 gigs of space. Um, the, the average is right around 50 gigs. So, um, and, and it takes a lot to really fill that up. The number one reason that space does fill up, by the way, the number one reason is file attachments. Um, putting large images in there, you know, when you attach something to a to a vendor or to a customer to a bill, high resolution PDFs or high resolution graphics are usually the number one reason why that's taking that up. Now that I've got my space usage, it looks good. Um, what I can do is is that um, I can now come in here and I can now um, um, take a snap, create a snapshot. So we basically click on snapshot. Now we can put this in maintenance mode. Um, there's a couple ways of doing that. Um, at this point here, I am not going to put this in maintenance mode. Um, but what I'm going to do is say okay. And at this point here, it asks us what am I doing, and I'm going to do a snapshot as of um, um, uh, December 2020 snapshot. It's asking me if this is a full backup here. Now, here's a couple key things here. How do you save space? Full except attachments. That's a really good thing. That prevents you from t eating up all your space. Um, now, however, if you wanted to um, restore this over your production data, which I would never do, um, then that's good, bad because you've lost your attachments. But this for just like a snapshot of, if you want to take a monthly snapshot or a yearly snapshot and you don't care about the attachments, try to click on the drop down and do full accept attachments and wiki or without it's accept attachments. Wiki, by the ways, are the help. So you can customize the help within Acumatica. So I'm going to do a full accept attachments here and I'm going to simply just say, okay, leave the rest alone. And this will go through and um, create your snapshot. Depending upon how big the system is, how, what you have in terms of number of records, um, things like that, this could take, um, I've seen it take between five minutes, between a minute or two, all the way up to 20 minutes, depending upon how much data you have in the system and how big your system is and, your perf and things like that in performance. So just keep that in mind. Once you have that snapshot here, you'll be able to see it down here. And again, if there's ever a snapshot you want to get rid of, I, I would highly recommend just making sure that you have us maybe double check it with you, but highlight it and then click on this little X here and that will delete that snapshot that's in there at that point. I promised you a 45 minute presentation. It's 44 minutes. I still, we have, we will gladly stay on the line for further questions um, about this, but I wanted to always keep our time. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to keep it in the box. If not, appreciate you being a client of Net of Work. Appreciate, um, obviously, 2020 has been a struggle for a lot of clients um, and a lot of a lot of people, and really appreciate the support that you've done for Net of Work throughout the year 2020 year. Um, if you have any questions, you may contact myself, Jason, John. I am sorry for not putting you on the PowerPoint. I apologize. That is my fault. Um, you can always go out to our um, Net at Work page, um, blog page. We also have a page dedicated to all of our blogs for Acumatica. So if you ever miss any of them, you can go out there. A lot of great information on our um, on our web page um, out there on um, um, blogs. Um, and then um, if there are anything else you need, like next year, any questions on um, month and processing, if there's any webinars you would like us to hold for free, just like today, please let us know. Jason, any questions that came in during this time? Nothing. Awesome. Great work, Stuart. I'm
Thank you. I'm going to just double up. See my tenant. See, so again, give it time. This process does take a long time. So just give that a little bit of time. So I uh, have to let it run. Oh, it looks like it's uh, getting it close to getting there. It's uh, it's still working, but it, it's got in that one part done. And then again, if I wanted to get rid of it, I could just click on the X to delete my older snapshots. But it looks like it's almost done. So awesome. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, team, for uh, put helping me put this presentation together. This is a team effort here at Network. Thank you, everyone. And um, we'll stay on the phone for a couple extra minutes in case any questions pop up. Otherwise, um, stay, have a safe um, holiday season. Um, stay safe out there. And thank you again.